Hi everybody, welcome back to Zephyr Travels. I'm Randy, and in this video, we have a special guest, Diane. So, Diane, how have you been? How are you feeling? I feel pretty good. Um, I'm a, what is it, a, week, a week out of the hospital after having my surgery, and um, I'm doing pretty good. The one problem I do have right now is because of IV fluids that I was given, that I do have some swelling right now mostly in my lower legs and feet which makes it a little bit difficult for me to walk but I am up and about um, so yeah I'm all in all I feel pretty good okay that's good so if you haven't seen our previous video um, stuck in San Diego you, you, ne you need to check that out to find out what's been going on because I go through the first four weeks of our trip to San Diego and where Diane spent most of that in the hospital until the point where she found out that she has a tumor on her ovary. And they got her discharged so she can go see um, a gynecologist, um, oncologist. Uh, gyne gynecologist, oncologist. Onco gynecologist oncologist right or an OB oncologist as I guess is probably the right. easiest way to say it right yeah and I guess that's where we're going to pick up the story here is our visit to Dr. Charles okay um, thankfully my primary doctor at Chula Vista um, she he knew of Dr. Lindsay Charles who's also in San Diego and her specialty is OB oncology. He discussed my case with her and she agreed to take me on as a patient. We had an initial office visit with her and um, she went over exactly what she thought that she needed to do and what she felt could be wrong. Uh, she didn't specifically give me a definite diagnosis of cancer but that was the way she was leaning at that time, pending the outcome of the surgery and pathology. Originally, I was scheduled to have surgery on Valentine's Day, February the 14th. Which would have been a week after your, your visit right. with her. Um, we got to um, the pre-op, and I was all set to go. Unfortunately, due to my sodium level, the anesthesiologist was a bit concerned. So they kind of waited a little bit, and based on her decision, my uh, surgeon decided to postpone the surgery for a few days. Yeah, you, th your um, blood work showed that you had a low sodium level, mm -hmm. and they were concerned that if they did the surgery, or the anesthesiologist was concerned that if they put you under with your sodium level that low, that it could cause issues with... Um, Brain swelling. Brain swelling, yes, which obviously you don't want. Obviously, you don't want to take the risk of that. So uh, my they, surgeon so said she felt it would be it more than likely would be okay, but they didn't want to take the chance. Right, and and the anesthesiologist has that you know final say in that. Right. So they they stopped. They canceled the surgery for that day, but they admitted you into the hospital, mm -hmm. and the intent was to pump you full of sodium and fluids. For, and they rescheduled your surgery for the following Monday, which was five days later. Right. When I was admitted to the hospital, not only did they um, give me sodium, then there was a little bit of an issue with my blood pressure being too low. So they had to work on that and work on getting that up to an acceptable reading. Yeah. Which, by the following Monday, which was the 19th of February... Everything was a go. I was rescheduled for surgery. The surgery was a go. The surgery was performed. I was taken back. I wasn't taken to intensive care. I was taken back to the room that I was in. And yeah. um, where Well, they I, kept you in pre-op for a while because, you know, your blood pressure, they were concerned about your your vitals for a while. You, you didn't, you know, normally you'd come back and you'd be there for a few hours and then move you back to your room. You stayed there for quite a while. Oh, okay, well... Yeah. Randy would know. Yeah, I, you I, you were out for most Rand, of that. Randy would know. I was. I yeah, was out I mean, it, it, I, I want to say that. I mean, the surgery went well, and everything there went well, mm -hmm. but your recovery was a little slower. Mm, okay. Yeah. 
so finally I was taken back to my room where I spent, what, another week recovering? Your recovery was supposed to be five days, and yeah, you re you recovered for, I think, eight days. Your recovery yeah. ended up being eight days. So it was a little slow. Um, you know, there were some other issues that I had. and um, Yeah, that you, you still have the a pleural infusion and the right. chest tube, which was another one of the concerns. Right, that was another concern. Um, so we take care of that, you know, right. ourselves. But that was a concern while you're in the hospital. They were hoping that they could take that tube out. Right. My surgeon was hoping that they could remove the tube, but um, it, it just didn't work out that way. Yeah. So that is something that I still have and will go home with. Now, the, the big concern and why your recovery took, you know, instead of five days, eight, eight days, is because of all that sodium and fluids they pumped you full, you ended up having swelling. Yes. Um, a lot. A lot of swelling. Um, basically, almost 40% increase in your body weight of fluids, mm -hmm. which is a lot. And she, Diane's a very small person. Right. So that is, you know, with medication, that is working its way out. Right now, today, my biggest problem is the swelling in my lower legs and my feet, which makes it a little difficult and painful to walk. But I can walk, yep. and I'm encouraged to walk and move my feet around and work that fluid out. Right, which it seems <laughs> to be happening. Right. So I'm hoping within the next several days that that, you know, that will work itself out and, you know, I'll be able to get around a little bit better. Yeah, I'd say you've, I mean... The last time we weighed you was a few days ago, and at that point, you lost over, gosh, what would you say, almost half mm -hmm. of the fluids, of the, fluid the weight. weight that you had yeah. gained from that. Right. So I don't know what you are now, but we notice a difference every day. Right. Right. That. It's gradually working its way out. You know, it's gone, like I said, except for my lower legs and my feet, and that, you know, that will come. Right. So, so, so during the surgery, they they removed the tumor. Um, it was it was a hysterectomy, so they removed your other organs that you don't need. <laughs> well, I don't know if I need them, but the yeah. doctor felt that she should, you know, remove any sign that there might be any type of um, malignancy. Right, and they took a number of biopsies. Yes. Of different areas at, at that time. And what was the results of those biopsies? Um, the final diagnosis was stage 2A ovarian cancer. Um, fortunately, all the biopsies, the lymph nodes, anything else they tested has come back negative for malignancy, which is great news. Yeah. So, and, so for people who don't know, stage 2 cancer basically says that it's contained within the organs and it hasn't spread to any other part of the body, which is exactly what multiple tests previous to the surgery was telling us, too, that you didn't have cancer anywhere, right? especially the fluids coming in out into the lung. So nothing was traveling through your bodies. The lymph nodes are good. Right. But you, do, you did have cancer. They removed most of it probably mm -hmm. during the surgery, but then there is always a risk of microscopic cancer that's still in your body. Right. You can go ahead. So... My surgeon f feels very confident that once I go through several rounds of chemo, that that will basically take care of whatever cancer might be remaining in my body. So that is the goal right now. Um, I'm in my third week of recovery following surgery. Usually they start, or they like to see recovery, I believe, four to six weeks so I'm still in that, you know, safe range of when I can start treatment. That depends on when we go home. Uh, we do have two referrals to, diff to two different cancer centers in Rochester. And um, I do have an appointment next week with one of them. So and we should have an appointment with the other one. Pr yeah, pretty right. soon. The referral is there. Um, I can't say enough about my surgeon's office, the staff there. Um, they've been absolutely wonderful in getting all my medical records together and forwarding them on to the appropriate 
uh, my doctors, the um, cancer centers. Yeah, like I said, I can't say enough about her office. She was, you know, absolutely, absolutely wonderful. I've, she was, yes. You know, she, she was working with both me and Randy, and just, you know, she, I can't say enough. Well, and, and, you know, to kind of step back a little bit, you know, we thought about going home and having the surgery at home. Mm -hmm. And when your primary doctor contacted this other doctor, the surgeon, and sent your case to her, and she came back, and she was very encouraging, even to the point where she actually thought that it was possible this wouldn't even be cancer. Right. And she, she wasn't even sure. She didn't give me a positive diagnosis going into the surgery. She w she wasn't even sure. She says, we'll have to wait. Yes, yeah. And that's, I mean, that's typical for ovarian tumors is that you don't, you won't know ahead of time if it's cancer unless it's spread to the other part of the body. Right. Um, and then thankfully in your case it hasn't. It was, mm -hmm. It's just detected very early. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it was a possibility here that it wasn't going to be cancer. But we kind of went back and forth on do we have the surgery here in San Diego or do we you know just send you home put you on an airplane send you home and get the you know then start finding a surgeon in the Rochester area to to treat you and we we really decided that you know the best hospital for Diane was the one we could get the surgery done the quickest and having a, a surgeon here that had already looked at her case and was ready to take it you know, immediately was you know a godsend really right i have to say uh dr charles was a blessing um there's no two ways about it that she was and, a and blessing she, to both of us yeah and really i mean what are the chances i have to say you know while we travel it's something we never really thought about was because we do travel to remote areas where you're like there's absolutely nothing around you so what do you do right so fortunately we were in the right place at the right time if yeah. that can be said that you yeah know, i think it, short of having this happen at home while we were at home and mm -hmm. you know and having the whole process start there i think this was probably the best place Right. for this to happen. San, um, San Diego is supposed to be the one one of the top cancer cities in the country. Yeah. Uh, for treatment, you know, of of cancer. Right. And, um, and and you have to figure that, you know, San Diego is probably one of the most desirable places to live in the country. Mhm. Mm and so it draws the best people here. The hospitals get absolutely the best people, which you experienced. I mean, the right. hospital staff was wonderful. Mm -hmm. The doctors were all great. From top to bottom, from food service to the doctors to the nurses to the technicians or just the um, people that move you around. I mean, it, it, I, you know, it was just really, um, I can't say enough. Right. My first primary at um, Chula Vista, he Dr. was wonderful. Dr. McGee. Dr. McGee. And um, he's really the one I have to thank for, you know, a lot of this. So, and even when I got over to the other Sharp Hospital. Sharp Memorial. Sharp Memorial. Um, you know, their staff, everybody. Uh, just, just, just phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. And, and all the way through, even, you know, right down to the... Um, uh, people in the uh, pre-op area before mm -hmm. your surgery we had because she was in pre-op for two different times and first time didn't go through a surgery we had the same pre-op nurse both right. days mm -hmm. and she happened to be from the rochester finger, you know, finger lakes area. finger lakes area yeah, yeah. so yeah. it was kind of like having a friend mm -hmm. especially the second day i mean she got it she remembered us i don't know if she even asked for us who knows but i don't know she but, she was there for the second pre-op visit when I, after my yep. surgery was rescheduled yeah. and, uh, she was there. Yes. She was super, super nice. Yeah, and, CJ. Yes. Yeah. CJ. And, uh, yes. So, so I guess that the next question is what's next? What's next is I will fly home tomorrow. We have been working closely with SkyMed and again, I can't say enough about their service. I am flying home tomorrow. I have a nurse coming in that's going to be traveling with me. 
they will pick me up at the trailer tomorrow morning. Um, the nurse will stay with me for the entire flight. We do transfer planes in Chicago. And then when we reach Buffalo, they will take me directly to my sister's house. And there I'll stay until Randy and our friend Jack um, get back with the trailer and the truck and the dogs. Right. So the other aspect of what SkyMed is doing is they're, friending, they're sending uh, a friend of mine out to drive back with me. So he's flying in today and here spend the night and then Diane leaves tomorrow and my friend and I will, once we know Diane's on the plane and flying home, we are hitched the trailer up and start making our trip back across country. And we're going to push it. We're going to try to get back there in five days. So. We couldn't be farther from home. <laughs> exactly. I guess, you know, the other side of the country, you're like, you know, um, yeah. I think, I don't know for sure, but I think maybe that's one of the reasons that we got such good care because people realized that we were so far away from home and so far away from our friends and family. We were really here by ourselves. Yeah. And um, I don't know if they had anything to do with it. I just think they're wonderful people. So uh, that's the plan right now. And then once we get home, then we'll, you know, take the next step in, our, in my treatment. And, right. Um, right. And that's going to, um, unfortunately, it probably will affect our travels for the summer. You know, May, you, probably maybe into next year. Yeah, so it, it's gonna, it, it it will have an effect, and we will talk about that probably in future videos. Mm -hmm. But I guess you know, I know you had some thoughts on this. Is what's it like um, recovering in an airstream? Well, if you think about it, anybody that has an airstream or any other type of um, trailer RV, you really have to look around and see what your setup is. And I have to say, for us, being in the Airstream, the layout that we have, we have the twin beds in the back, the bathroom's in the middle, and then you come forward to the front, and there's, you know, your living space. And all of it is within... Well, the whole, your hallway here is probably just 20 feet. Right. And your bathroom is, is 8 feet from your bed. Right. It's right at the foot of your bed, and basically. And being as we have twin beds... It's comfortable for me. It's comfortable for Randy. The shower is great. It has a seat in it. So I can, you know, I can use that. The bathroom is real close. Everything is within a few feet of each other. So in that respect, since I've been discharged, I mean, it really has worked out very well. Um, and I, I tell Randy this, that when we do get home, that... You know, the Airstream will be parked in the trailer. In the driveway. I mean, in the driveway. And as the nicer weather approaches, depending on how my treatment goes and, you know, how I respond and everything, being in the trailer might work out for me much better than being in the house. Yeah. And um, it just... It hasn't been that bad. Well, I don't know what the doctors thought. They thought, you know, they, a trailer. They, yeah, they were kind of thought. They they actually thought about keeping you in the hospital a little longer, you know, before discharging because they were concerned you're being discharged to a trailer. Yeah. And I don't know if they really thought about really what you had here, but it's really the perfect setup. It is the perfect setup. I mean, it's it's a very compact and small space and. Mm -hmm. And it puts you close to the bathroom, so if you have bathroom issues during this, which you tend to, mm -hmm. um, it works really well. And I think, you know, even, you know, when, you know, like you said, when you go through chemo, having the um, bed and the bath right near each other may be better. And this is air conditioned and can be a little bit more comfortable than the home, probably. Right. I could, you know, I don't know if both, maybe both of it, I don't know, but it would be a good setup, you know. I would just be comfortable, I think. Yeah, yeah. If you want to get away from the, everything going around in the house with the dogs and me, right? This might be a better place for you for a right. few days. So, you know, we'll see how things go, but it's mm. always an option for us that we kind of looked at and and I said, you know, this really is comfortable for me. Yep. Uh, I'm not disturbing Randy at night if I have to get up, um, and then the dogs have their own space, so they've been working out well. 
and um, yeah. So another plug for Airstream. <laughs> um, you know, they ju it just it's not it's big enough, but not too big like some of the other brands of RVs, right. and it's not too small. Right, right. Exactly. We're not, you know, I mean, you have every amenity: your refrigerator, your bathroom, your um, you know, your bedroom, your kitchen, yep. uh, TV, Wi-Fi. You know, couch. Yeah. You know, it's just. So we'll so we'll see how that goes. Right, right, exactly. So the uh, last thing I wanted to talk about is so what's going to happen with these effort travels. Well, I have a lot of video that I recorded that I haven't edited down into weekly videos yet. So we've got some catching up to do, and so you're going to see, you know, stuff from the from the past few months that we've never, um, you know shown on the channel yet so we've got new videos coming out that you're going to be able to watch and we also we're probably going to follow this journey a little bit more definitely going to look into you know diane's trip home on sky med and she's going to shoot a little video when she gets to the airport hopefully hopefully she can do that on her phone but also you know my trip across country with my friend jack um, we're shooting some video on that so that will be coming we'll do some updates on and occasionally on diane and how she's doing and you know, how we um, make out with the other steps. Um, and we're finding some things to put out there for videos, so we're going to try to keep going and try to get, you know, regular videos back up for you guys. I think there's going to be a point where we're going to maybe run out of some things or have to get a little creative. But we'll deal with that when we get there. Um, and hopefully, in between chemo treatments, you're going to have a weekend or something that you're going to feel good enough to travel and do some local stuff. So, mm -hmm. you know, we're fine things. You know, and you know, we're not going to end the channel just because of this. We're going to try to figure out a way to work around it, I guess. Right. So, so hopefully you like this video, and if you did, you know, please give us a comment and give us a thumbs up. If you are new to the channel and you want to check out some of our other videos, um, we'd love to have you uh, follow along and please subscribe to our channel. And I guess until the next time. Well, until the next time. We'll see you down the road. See you down the road. All right. Bye, everybody. Okay. Bye.